catching more vibes. She was on the west, kisses on the neck, no respect. Have you have you been watching the Jordan documentary, by the way? Yes. I have. Yeah. Yeah, did we I'm all caught up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we <laughs> might we might have lost Ashlyn right there. Uh, I don't know if she's coming back. Oh, she's back. I'm she's back. back. <laughs> so there you go. I don't know what happened. So but I'm uh, back. Yeah, have we all been watching the uh, Jordan documentary? Have we been following that? I have, yo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That shit, is, that shit got yep. me inspired. <laughs> My man yeah. is a dog. I fuck with everything. Everything he did, I'm with. I'm with Word, all. The, me too. I'm with all the shits. Well, I mean, right. I feel him. I feel him because he's an Aquarius, and I just relate to that guy. <laughs> I, re I relate to that, but you just got that same energy. Uh, he, he got a lot of the same character. I see a lot of characteristics that I have in myself, like to my own horn, because I'm not Michael Jordan. But to I feel him though. <laughs> I understand his personality to an extent, more so now than I did before, because I feel like he was always a sort of like mysterious person. Like you didn't really know too much mm -hmm. about him. He's not really visible. He's just like tucked away in the fortress you know his jordan <laughs> fortress or whatever the fuck he has going on so like uh, you never really see him but i feel like uh, this is open people up to who he is and i feel like uh amongst everything he's just like a driven person like he just wants to win at everything mm -hmm. i feel like that's the number one thing i took took away from this like he's just a winner and it's like i feel like to the extent where like if you're with him he's trying to instill his mindset in other people and like it's hard to like ha get other people to think the same way you think you know to try to pull people along the same way and try to get people to do things the way you do them so i feel like a lot of the negative perception that people have of jordan is just basically he just is driven and he just wants people that are with him to you know act the same way and just you know do follow in his you know footsteps you're trying to get everybody in the same wavelength as him and that's really hard to do but um uh shit i feel like he he did it he did it as far as basketball goes did it six times bro did it six times um right ashlyn what do you think like what did you think about jordan before you saw the documentary before this documentary came out what was your thoughts of michael jordan the person obviously the basketball player you know he's great but you know, any thoughts on him as a person? So I feel like, so I feel like, as you mentioned, I always thought he was like super mysterious. So I don't feel like I ever had a negative, like, like a negative opinion about him. I just feel like growing up because we were so young, like when he was like on top of the world, all I knew about Michael Jordan for a really long time was like, he's the best. Like he's Michael Jordan. Like he is the best. And I feel like, Growing up in the LeBron era, which I mean, me and Malcolm have had our fair exchange about <laughs> about LeBron in our good time. We but, did, we did. Yeah, but like, I feel like the some of the reasons that I felt like I that some of the negative opinions that I have I had about LeBron, like early on or like growing up, I feel like I would have had about like Jordan, if that makes sense. But because I didn't know much about him, I feel like I didn't connect that until I watched like the documentary. And I'm like, oh, shit, like all the things that I hated about LeBron are kind of like the same shit that I hated about Jordan. And like, I feel like I've gotten to a place that I don't have that animosity, I guess, towards like LeBron, like I did like growing up. And I guess like seeing that in like the Jordan documentary kind of puts it together like, I can't hate this guy who's supposed to be like the greatest of all time and then watch like a mirror kind of effect with like LeBron and then like, not like him, but like him, if that makes sense. So, all right. It, yeah. So it was really interesting watching that in like the documentary. I just feel like it, it, it was like a shock for myself. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what is this? Like, I didn't expect that. At all. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, me personally, I always, you know, I'm a fan and a student of basketball as a whole. So, like, I played, I watch it, I love it. So, like, I've always 
known. I've seen clips. I've seen highlights. I've watched old games of Michael Jordan. I've always knew, known how great he was. But I feel like I like that, like, um, it really showed, like, people that maybe wasn't as aware of just how good he actually was. You know, people that, you know, have just grown up in this era and only watch basketball from this era, haven't seen anything from back in the day. They start to get more aware of, like, yo, like, this nigga was nice. Like, I didn't know niggas was that nice back then. Like, I feel like people, right. you know, started to catch that. But, like, Giselle, you think, do you think, like, Jordan suffers from, like, that, I guess, the, the, the top of the food chain, like, syndrome where, like, people just, uh, sort of hated him like you know how people hate lebron or people hate drake or people hate mayweather you know just well, he's at the top of the chain, essentially like do you think jordan suffered from that or do you think he would suffer from that today honestly um like you said i'm a student i'm a fan like this is something that i've watched growing up it's something that i adore Speak so in watching the documentary like ashton said at first you don't know much about Jordan. Like, he's, like, an anonymous type character. You know, he's real behind the scenes. He does what he has to do, and that's it. But, like, in watching The Last Dance, um, I think we can all learn something from Jordan. And I think it's the fact that um, he was very, like, dedicated to the game. And it's something that it's not because he needed money. You know what I mean? Like, no offense to Scottie Pippen or nothing, but he came off that way in the documentary, like, it was, it was never about, like, oh, like, I really want to win this championship. Like, nah, I want my money, and I want it now. So, for Jordan, I don't think that he suffered from, like, the top of the food chain type thing. Um, I think he just went and did what he had to do because that's something that he was passionate about. Like, it was mm -hmm. something that was instilled in him since he was younger, and you see that throughout the documentary. Like, his parents, especially his father, who was such, like, a big influence in his life, and then his brothers, like, that competition was in him from, like, the jump. So mm -hmm. in that same fashion, like, you think about LeBron and you think about Kobe, like, those dudes literally picked this up from LeBron. And that's why a lot of people have, like Ashton said, like, yo, like, maybe when I was growing up, I ain't like LeBron James, yeah. but that's probably the reason because they're just pushing forward to get what they want. Like, that's, like, their only mission. Mm -hmm. And I personally could respect that because at the end of the day, like when you look at it, NBA, you're here to win championships. And especially now, like it's mostly about numbers. Like it's not about nothing else. It's just about numbers, how many championships you have, rings, MVPs. So I respect it. Personally. Real quick before Tim, before I let you go, my bad, but like you just made me think of something like the way that Jordan um sort of um elevated like the, the the global success of basketball made it so where guys today, you know, they can focus on other things but playing. Before Jordan came, when you were in the NBA, you were essentially just, I'm playing basketball, mm -hmm. I'm focused on winning. But now, since Jordan, Jordan really helped make the game so global that it's like guys can now focus on like, yo, I can have a global brand, I can sell sneakers overseas, I can, you know, be the biggest – you know, name and in, in entertainment, blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, he so he kind of allowed guys to, like, not focus on winning, which is crazy, like, you know, when you think about it. But, right. Tim, um, yeah, man, what do you – what's your overall thoughts of documentary? I think it's all of that rolled in one. Like, I still remember – I was young watching the games, but, like, I don't really have any memories of watching them live. But my dad always had them recorded on VHS, so we would watch them whenever. Like, if I was over there, i just – pop them in so I remember like just the era it's like a kid watching LeBron now like if a kid was watching LeBron now he'd be like yeah I remember when he did this and that it's just, that's how I feel about it and I think for me personally the most impactful part about him was the culture like as far as how he permeated into music into like just like our culture in general just mm -hmm. from the hustle you know like just his whole mm -hmm. perseverance hustle hard work like, the whole psychotic, obsessive way that he goes about trying to, like, achieve his goal, like, that went into into rap music. I feel like it went into just, like, competition. Like, everybody, whether you played tennis or golf or everybody wanted to be like Mike, like, literally. It's like, that, he personified what that, what a driven person is. Like, if, 
if you have a goal and you don't attack it like Michael Jordan attacked it, I feel like you're never going to make it. Like, that's, that's how I felt. And then on top of that, <laughs> he changed the way, like, people were dressing before Iverson did it. Talk about the most historic, mm-hmm. probably, line of sneakers in all time. Like, he just impacted life, to be honest. Like, I feel like before Jordan, culture was different. I think he is, like, the start of what we have now, and then it, like, fractured into everything else. But watching this, just it brought, it brought back a lot of memories, and it, it kind of just reminds you of, like, his journey because it showed you how hard he worked before he had, like, his teammates. Like, he was busting his ass. He was the best guy out there busting his ass, but he, st- he still couldn't get shit done until he got help. You know, so it, it lets you to, like, lets you put things in perspective as far as what you said. Like, he's just a driven person trying to get his whole team on the same page. And how he went about it is like it's objective. Like you could think that it's bad or or good, but like he got at the end of the day, he won six championships and he didn't fail in either of those like moments. Like he went six six and zero in the finals. Like that's unheard of. He did three 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 feet. Well, two three feet with a retirement at like eighteen month retirement in between. Like yep. that shit is a fucking. It's a it's a myth. <laughs> like the fact the fact that he's a real person is crazy. That's some shit that like. If we were in ancient Greece, niggas would think he's Hercules type shit. Like, <laughs> right. You know, and then to witness that and, and have it as a, as a fable of real life, like, that's how it impacted me. And then the last dance just brings it all back. And to see him, like, react in live action, like, mm-hmm. to see, like, how people talk about it, like, with the whole thing with him and Gary Payton, it just bring, it makes him more of a person. Like, he, he was a god, and now, like, seeing shit like this makes him more human. So it's pretty dope. Yeah, and even, like, when you see, like, little clips of, like, former players talking about Jordan, he's the only player, I feel like, maybe in any sport where the play, even the players he played against, everybody universally, like, yo, he was the great, like, he was the best. He was the best. Like, everybody, mm-hmm. Charles Barkley, uh, Isaiah Thomas, um, mm-hmm. all his teammates, everybody, Magic Johnson, like, everybody that he played against says he's the best. And, like, yeah, that 3 P. The three, the two three peats. Every time I, if I think about it too hard, it's like it just doesn't compute in my brain. I'm like, yo, he won three, retired, played baseball, yeah. um, wasn't you know didn't, and I, honestly, I think he, if he would have played baseball for a longer period of time, I feel like if he would have focused on it for longer, he would have been a good player. That's a hot you know? take. That's a hot yeah. take. Yeah, like, they were saying in that in that documentary was that if yep. they didn't if they didn't have that lockout, he probably would have kept playing. Mm-hmm. And he was already do- he he hit good numbers. He hit over two hundred, which for like a uh he was like thirty something in double A. Like to hit two hundred is is a crazy feat. And he was already like pushing and progressing towards the end of the season. So that's a huge what if take. Like imagine he never came back, he would have won crazy. a fucking World Series or some shit. Like think about how life changes. <laughs> And to think how great he was, like, if he would have never came back and he would have just won the three championships and played baseball and retired, like, people were still saying he was the greatest at that time after just three. After just three. Like, that's nuts to me.